Good morning, everybody. This is Lainey from Hilltop Home Place. Sometimes I just have to purge myself. I say that a lot on my channel. I just have to kind of purge my thoughts sometimes so that I can move on with my life, with my channel, with my thoughts. This is really the only venue I have to just express my thoughts with no interruptions, with no counterpoints, though I don't mind hearing counterpoints. But to be able to express my thoughts from my heart to my mouth and out without contradiction, without interruption, without someone telling me you should feel this way, you shouldn't feel this way, and counterpointing. I don't want any counterpoints verbally right now. I just want to express my thoughts. About a year ago, around this time, my garden had gotten out of hand. I had It had gotten so hot that I let the weeds just take over because I just couldn't stay out there very long. And so I set a, a goal for myself to take one week and just take that garden back, just take that upper garden of mine at my old house back. And I kind of laid out a plan of just taking it by the littles, just row by row, taking it by the littles, just taking this 10 foot plot of tomatoes and weeding it and, and, and not worrying about the rest until that was done. And then when it got done, you know, moving on, moving on to the squash. Next thing you know, as the week ticked by, I documented it in a video called Reclaiming the Hill because the upper garden was up on a hill. And I'll link that at the bottom. Everybody wants to link everything. It's, it's on my list if you want to go watch it, but I'll link it at the bottom. But as I, that week went on, I did videos of morning sessions and evening sessions because it was too hot to work in the middle of the day. And I reclaimed that hill. I reclaimed that garden to the best of my ability, not perfection, but to the best of my ability in one week's time with the energy and the skills that God's given me, I reclaimed that hill. And one day while I was doing it, I kind of talked about something because the only way I could get through all that is to listen to videos and things like that on my phone because I was out there for hours and hours and hours. And so I had listened to a video one morning where Rory Feeks, country singer, but also gardener, entrepreneur, farm owner in Tennessee, was interviewing Joel Salatin. And Joel, if you know him, takes a long time sometimes to answer a question because he kind of puts things in context before he gives an answer. And Rory pointed that out. And he said, you know, sometimes, Joel, I noticed that you don't answer a question without putting everything into context. And Joel Salatin said, yeah, I guess that's right. And I said on my video that that stopped me in my tracks that morning because I realized that that's what I tend to do. To form the thought better in my own head, I kind of have to take a while to explain it to someone, to have it make sense to me, to just be able to get my thought out clearly. I'm just not a person that can can zero it in and make it concise in three words or less. <laughs> I'm just not. And if I did do that, I probably would forget about it later because if, if I don't kind of create a story sometimes that goes around that thought then it doesn't stay in my own brain, much less mean a whole lot to you. So that's why I do that sometimes. And you either like that on my channel or you don't. If you like it, stay. If you don't, I, I, there's, I'm boring to you. So I expressed that on that video that day. And I'm kind of channeling that back today because uh, all this indictment with President Trump has upset my soul. My whole soul is upset by it. I knew it was coming. They tell you it's coming. The attorney generals in New York ran for office claiming they were going to do nothing but hunt down President Trump and find reasons to indict him. That's all that our FBI seems to have the time for these days is to go after President Trump when there's children being trafficked all over the United States. But that's all right. You know, <laughs> I could get angry. <laughs> I could get angry. I could get very, very upset. And I actually am in my soul. But in order to just get that out of my soul and to put it in perspective, I just thought this channel is really it. I love people in my life. I love my family. I love my friends. But sometimes you cannot sit down and express all your thoughts, even to people that you want to be around. 
because it's just human nature and I probably do it to them and I, I don't mean to, I probably do do it to them too. You get interrupted. You get told, oh, you know, it's going to be all right. It's going to be okay. Or you don't need to feel that way or you shouldn't feel that way. You shouldn't feel that way because if we had faith in God, we would feel this way, you know, and I don't want to hear all that right now. I don't want to hear all of it, even from people I love. I don't want to be interrupted. I don't want to be restructured and told my thoughts are kind of silly. Even people I love thinking that they're helping you by calming you down or by uh, giving you a different perspective or whatever, your thoughts end up being negated and your thoughts end up being, we go back into polite conversation. Let's just say that you go back into polite conversation because that's just the way it is in this world. Polite conversation. Well, the only place that I can express myself is through this video, <laughs> through this medium of social media, I guess. I have said before, I don't even know why I do a YouTube channel. I'm kind of shy. Well, then it hits me later. I'm like, that's why I do a YouTube channel because sometimes this is the only way I can voice my own opinions and get them out. And whether they're slammed or not, whatever, they're out. My whole thought is out. <laughs> And that means a lot to me, and it helps me so much to get my whole thoughts out without correction, interruption, condescension, or just flat out negation. So that's what I'm doing today. And I don't want any hate in my heart really to take over. I really have decided this morning, I'm just gonna focus on love and appreciation and I decided that rather than come on here, like I, I'm already seeing a few other channels do, and I, I appreciate them. Anybody that's speaking up for our former president right now, I appreciate. If you're speaking up for him in any way, shape, or form, I appreciate it, and I'm with you. I just decided for myself that instead of going in any kind of direction to, of proof or this or that or whatever, um, of arguing about facts, I just wanted to say thank you, President Trump. I just want to say thank you. When you came down that elevator, I didn't even see it. I listened to it, though. I was in the car with my son, and we were listening to you. And I remember my son asking me, uh, basically, who is this? Because he was young, and he didn't really have any history of knowing who you were. And I was telling him your history. And he said, uh, and he was liking what he was hearing. And he said, well, do you think he has a chance? And I said, uh, well, you never know. I said, he's he's saying the right things right now. I said, uh, people are kind of ready for that. I said, so you never know. And as the weeks and months rolled out, I just loved my country more than I ever had. And this is coming from a person who was at the prime age. I was right at the bicentennial age to take school trips to the freedom trains to, we did a play at our school, a big bicentennial play that recover, that uh, called to mind the whole history of the United States of America. I was a Southern Belle. Maybe that's not cool anymore, but I, did. I wore a Southern Belle dress because that is our history and we can't erase it. And we had your Abe Lincolns. We had everybody else in the play. We, we did everything from the Minutemen on up. Uh, it was fantastic for a little school play it involved every student in that school to make all the parts, and we did it, and I loved our country. When the wagon trains were traveling around America, if anybody remembers that during all that time, I was there. I was at our high school football stadium when the wagon train came into our town, and I was there, and I loved it. And then I went through, I guess what I'm going to call, I was probably already there, but I just wasn't voting that because I was young at, at that point. Then I go through high school and this, that, and the other. And then right out of high school, went to college, but um, I got married while I was in college. So my life started where I really kind of had to pay attention to things. And I, other than President Reagan, because I did love him a lot, everybody else, um, I chose who to like based on whether they were Republican or Democrat. I voted Republican. My husband voted Democrat. We went and canceled each other out every election. <laughs> and that changed after a while. I didn't change. Let me just say that. He, he changed. But after a while, 
that didn't happen anymore. But for a long time there, we just canceled each other out. But I just, my mindset, my ethics were on the Republican candidates. And I didn't realize until President Trump came along later. And I didn't realize until how viciously he was attacked by some of those people I voted for. I didn't realize that when I was voting, that it didn't really matter if it was Republican or Democrat. A lot of it was the same old club and we weren't in it. And I know that phrase is being used a lot because when George Carlin said it, um, he was just a comedian on a stage. And now we realize we live it. It's a big old club and we're not in it. And President Trump wasn't in it. He didn't go to Bilderberg. He didn't do all that stuff like the club did, like all the people I voted for, who I thought were going to make change, who I thought were going to protect children, who I thought were going to protect us and put America first, and they didn't. They said the words, but what they did was put us in wars and build up their big war machines and do things like that that were at the time, at the time, sucked me in as well because I wanted to trust those people. I didn't want to know that I had voted for criminals. <laughs> I didn't want to know that I had voted for people that were lying. That was not in my brain. I thought I had picked the lesser of the evils. And then I realized only after President Trump came on the scene and only after our media exposed themselves for what they were, only after these former politicians exposed themselves for what they were, at that point, I started realizing we've been had, we're in trouble. We're in trouble. This whole country's in trouble because we have done what they wanted us to do all these years. We have fallen into all the manipulation. We have. I don't care if you're Republican or Democrat, you've been propagandized. You've been manipulated. I've been manipulated. I thought I was smart. <laughs> I thought I looked into candidates. I thought I knew their hearts. And I was taken. And then along comes a candidate that just tells it like it is calls it like it is and they can't have that because he was right and he was popular and his star was rising and the American public wanted him and when he won in 2016 all the things they had done to make sure he wouldn't win didn't work and they were freaked out and that wasn't going to happen again and it didn't and like Forrest Gump, that's all I'm going to say about that. But I think you know what I think about that. So here we are. 2024 election is coming. President Trump has announced he will run again. And they can't have that. They can't have that. And the wheels are in motion. People like me are supposed to give up on him. People like me, you're supposed to be looking at DeSantis or Pence or who wants to look at Pence. I don't even know why he's running, but I don't want that hate to come out, but I'm, I'm serious. I don't know why he's running. Uh, there cannot be polls that say he could win. So it makes me wonder why they're running. And I think they're just running. And I, I keep noticing when I log on to the tube that a lot of news snippets about Pence are in there now. So we're going to get flooded with that. And that's so we'll look at him. We'll think he's good. We'll look at DeSantis. We'll look at this one. We'll look at Tim Scott. We'll look at this one. And that. I don't care. I don't care. This girl is voting for Donald Trump in 2024, and he better be on the ballot. I have lost complete faith in the government of our country, not our country. Our country is good. We have good people. We have good people. I meet them every day. I see them every day. And I have said that on videos before, and I stand by it. The majority of this country is good, is very good, very hardworking. We love our children. We love our grandchildren. We love our country. 
but they can't have that. They can't have that because how do you implement an agenda on people that don't want it? One of the first things you do is you take away the people that inspire them to feel the way they do and that want that leader. You take away that leader. Shame on our government. Shame on our Department of Justice. I'm going to put air quotes around justice. Department of Justice. Shame on our FBI. Shame on our White House. Shame on all of them that meet and go in little rooms here, there, and yonder and figure out what they're going to do that is outside of our Constitution and outside of our law and then walk out and get in front of a camera and say something completely different to keep you and I distracted. Well, I'm not distracted any longer. I don't look at anything, anything that I see in the media, anything that YouTube puts forth as news, I don't look at any of that as truth anymore. None of it. I feel like when I'm logging onto my laptop, if Microsoft Edge is wanting to throw stories at me, then they're false. Then they're just propaganda. Because if they chose to put this story out there, and it's never good. It's always bad news. <laughs> it's always slamming President Trump with the worst picture in the world with him, like, maybe sweating at an outdoor event or something, and it's looking terrible. And they want me to see that, and they want me to think he's crazy. And th I get this every time I log onto my laptop. And guess what? I click off of it. I reject it. I don't even read your stories. I don't give you my clicks. I don't have much in this world, but I have clicks. I got a finger that can click on anything on the internet and I don't click on it because I'm not giving you my time. I'm not giving you ad revenue. I'm not giving you that click. I just let it go and I move on and really just log on and look at my YouTube to upload the thumbnail from the video that I uploaded off my phone. I don't really even spend any time in media on my laptop, I have too much else going in my life. But I wanted to say today, thank you, President Trump, because because of you, I am awake. I see it. I know it now. I can spot one of these weasels at a mile away. I don't care if they're Republicans or Democrats. I can spot them a mile away now by what they say, by what they don't say what they don't say. Pay attention right now to the ones that aren't saying much about President Trump. If you got in trouble in your hometown, you will remember who stood up for you and who didn't. And, and our president is in trouble right now because of these things. I think a lot of them will get dropped. They're just kind of hoping one noodle will stick to the cabinet. You know, one noodle that'll take him down and that'll erode his support and that'll keep him out of the election. And there you go. And then they don't have to run all the scams they did in 2020 because he will just be gone. And they know that none of the other Republican candidates can surmount all these things that are in place to make sure the right person gets in office. That's my opinion. You can call me a conspiracy theorist if you want to. I don't really care. This is me. This is my channel. Like it or don't. Subscribe or don't. I thank President Trump because I went from a whole adulthood of just getting through politics, getting pumped up with Rush, with Sean Hannity, with whoever, to think we might have some type of change in our country to where good people are appreciated again, only to be let down over and over and over as as good people were depicted as evil and sin and deplorable things were depicted as good. And then President Trump comes along and he says, we're all good, we're Americans. You know, let's just be united. Let's make America great again. Let's get jobs, let's get manufacturing. Let's get our steel production back into our country, which they fought him on. Let's, you know, charge these other countries some tariffs that are wiping us out, uh, which they fought him on. <laughs> they fought him on everything. 
they could not have him coming in and disrupting the status quo that has made an exorbitant amount of people in this country very, very rich, but a hundred times as many people very, very poor. They couldn't have that. They had to get rid of him, but he never showed up, and I appreciate it. I was not one who sat there every day and watched all the press conferences and stuff, but I did like to sit there and watch all of these meetings that he would go to in the towns. When MS-13 was so bad in the Northeast, bad everywhere, but when they were so bad in the Northeast, he would go sit down with the people who had been affected, with the parents, with the local law enforcement, and he would say, what can I do for you? And I just remember those meetings because they were like, nobody's been listening throughout years. Nobody's been, they've been bringing these people into our country on purpose and placing them in our high schools and in our neighborhoods on purpose. And then these MS-13 people were turning around and terrorizing these same towns and nobody was helping, nobody. And he said, I'll help you. And y'all, he did. And he cleaned them out. And now we're letting them come back. Shame on us. And shame on our law enforcement agencies that are directing our good guys at the other law enforcement agencies to turn a blind eye and to let all this happen. Shame on us for flying in people in all parts of our country who should not be there because they have not been vetted. They have not been vetted. They cannot come in at the rate they're coming in and get a ticket and get put on a plane, a bus, a car, a van, and sent all over America within hours and be vetted. It's not happening. And don't lie to me and tell me it is, because it's not. President Trump said, we're going to end that. We're going to build a wall. We're going to make people come through certain ports and get vetted. And they crucified him. And they said, we didn't have money for that. We got money. We've sent 500 million, billion, trillion dollars, whatever, to Ukraine. We've got money. We print money when we need money, when they want money. But we didn't have any money to protect our border. And he's the only president in my lifetime that tried hard to protect that border. And now we're seeing what happens when we don't protect the border. I just want to thank him. I want to thank him for meeting with fishermen and hunters. Barack Obama had told our fishermen they couldn't fish off the East Coast for certain reasons, certain miles around. They couldn't do it. Foreign fishermen could come in and fish it, but not our own fishermen. And President Trump met with them and he said, why? And they said, we have no idea, but we will get arrested if we go fish these waters. And he said, oh, no, 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 no. And that day, sitting right there in that meeting, he wrote an executive order negating the order from Barack Obama. And he's like, go fish. You're Americans. This is American waters. He didn't understand it a lot of times. What was the big deal? What was the reason we would stranglehold our own citizens and then open America to the world to take advantage of? He didn't understand it's not because he's not smart. It's because he wasn't involved in all of it. He didn't have a bag man bringing him money. He didn't have people going all over the world to make him part of their criminal organizations so that he could enrich himself more and more and more. I don't mind somebody being rich. When you can show what you've done to get it and you can walk into front of a skyscraper hotel with exorbitant rates, You've pretty much got a way to get rich. <laughs> You've done it. When you don't even look like you have a job and you make $20 million a year and I can't figure out what you even do, that's what I worry about. I never worried about President Trump, though. He had a lifetime of track record showing his wealth. That's fine with me. I never resented him for his wealth. I just want to thank him mostly for making it where... We just walked around for at least five years saying USA, 
you know, USA, everywhere you went. Red, white, and blue was it. Red, white, and blue was the, the bond that got us together during that. There were people that hated it. They were, they hated it. Why would you hate America? You can hate the president if you want, but why did you hate it so much that we loved our country and that we were binding ourselves together as a country and that we were saying no to wars under him? He had his own ways of making sure we weren't in wars. And sometimes it was forceful, but he kept us out of them. So I'm just going to wrap this up. Thank you for letting me get my thoughts out today. Thank you for listening if you stayed to the end. I just wanted to say thank you, President Trump. Thank you for being who you are, for stepping on all the landmines that you stepped on and taking all the bullets and arrows that you took to wake us up, to wake us up and to make America have the potential to be what it can be. We would not be where we are today had you not been president for four years. And I would count myself one of the luckiest people in the world if you could serve another four years. I want you to win in 2024. I will be voting for you in 2024. I don't care what happens with my channel for putting a video out there like this. If it's my last video, I don't care. I will speak. We will speak when we know that a strong leader needs to be supported. I will speak. You speak, people out there. Speak up. Speak up for our president. Don't just watch what other people are saying. You speak up for our president. He will be a great second-term president because he knows even more the system now. And it's not pretty, but he knows it. And he has shown us that he will take the bullets for us to make sure that our children grow up in a better place. And he'll do it for a really good price, a dollar a year. <laughs> Thank you, President Trump. I love you and I love America. I love this country and we're gonna make it great again. We're gonna keep it great after that. God bless America. This is Lainey from Hilltop Home Place. Bye-bye.